Hi, I'm Mary Jo Boyd, here with another eBite from Attorney Computer Systems. Today we're going to be talking about Practice Master and one of my favorite features, the timer. I'm going to show you how to create them in the morning uh, to just start your day with all the tasks that you have to do and you can just go in and out of this timer or just to start one on the fly, however you'd like. Um, so we're just going to explore this really cool feature that I think will help you capture time every day. Let me show you. So in Practice Master, we have this little timer feature. It looks like a little stopwatch. And if we click on it, it opens up a separate window. So this can be actually sized and reduced. So it can be down at the bottom of your screen if you'd like. Um, or you can just reduce it and it'll pin it down to your taskbar down here, um, whichever you prefer. Um, there are some different columns here that you can uh, play with and you can move. If you don't want to see the description or the uh, work description, you can actually drag things over and, and rearrange these columns. But the standard, you know, we've got our start date, time, uh, the time that it's lapsed, client name, things like that. Um, so if you want to start a new timer, let's say that at the beginning of the day you come in and you know you have four different clients that you're going to be working on. You can come in and start timers for those just by clicking on the new and I'm just going to start four of them. Now right now you can see that they're not assigned to any client, they're not started, there's no start date, time, anything. So if I know that this first timer is going to be for um, a certain client, I can come in and assign that right away and save it. And now I've got a timer ready for Daniel Klein. I can also come in and do the second one and I also know that I have to talk to Kelly White today. So I can start a timer for her and it's ready for me to go when I pick up her file or I call her or I start a conference with her I can then just begin my timer and then stop it when I'm done and you, the, you can only have one timer going at once so um, if I start with Daniel Klein and I start my timer and I'm working on Daniel Klein's case and I work on that for a little while and then I get interrupted with a phone call or I have to pick up I'm ready to deal with Kelly White now I can stop the timer I can pick up Kelly White's file and I can start her case here. And now she's going. And then when I'm done with that, I can go to the next one. I usually start one for um, a miscellaneous, just in case I do get that phone call that interrupts me. I can just come in and flip to that one and turn it on. And then I can assign who I talk to later. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now I did double click that and opened up a timer record. So I'm just gonna close that just so I can show you how I got there. So if I wanted to go in now, I'm finished with Daniel Klein. I worked on him for however long that was and I want to make some notes about what I did. If I double click on that timer it opens up this journal record file and I can start typing what I did. You still can use your little F5 to put in date, time, and user if you like. Return and just type in what you did. This can be paragraphs, whatever it is that you did for uh, Mr. Klein. When I get done with this I can then go over, I can save this record um, and I can convert it to a fee instantly. So it's going to look at this and it'll convert it. And you can set your settings to round it to the nearest tenth, to build a minimum of a tenth, whatever you want. So if I convert this to a fee, it's going to ask me to save it, first of all, because it needs to save the journal record. So I'm going to say yes. It takes me right into a timer window. It's got my information here. It's just defaulting to what I typed. So if this isn't what I want the client's bill to look like, I can just come in here and I can just retype, you know, conference with client or whatever it is that I want the bill to say. Save it. I've created a bill, a fee record, and I still have maintained my journal record so that I can go back in. Now, a lot of times I get questions on what happens if I forget to turn it off or what happens if I forget to turn it on when I get back. You can always come back in and edit the times. What I say, you know, what I will do is if I forget to turn on my timer, I just turn it on when I remember and then I go back in, I note the time that I started and I can always go back and I can change this and say I really started this at 9 a.m. and it will go in and adjust my time so accordingly. Or if I go to lunch and I forget to shut it off, I can also change the time here and in this case I can only go as far as what my clock says, I can't go past it but I will say 9.06 and it rounds it up to the six minutes. So you can edit these times. You can even come in and put in another row. Maybe you stopped here and you forgot that you went back and you did two more things or whatever. You can add a new row and you can say, well, at this time I did this and this and you know, you can put that in and add to your journal note. So you can capture all, a, a lot of lost time by using this timer and flipping back and forth and you get into this habit of just always having a timer running. I have firms that actually have it running for um, non-billable time too. They keep track of their employees day from start to finish. If you're doing this, this, this all the way through your day so that that's captured. 
um, using the convert to fee makes it fast and easy. These records do show up on Matter Manager so that you can even just create your timer records and then go to Matter Manager at the end of the day and convert them to fee. So there's lots of things that you can use this timer for um, to help you prevent lost time. I hope this eBite's been helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments, you can either call us at 800-475-8104 or you can visit our website, www.attorneycomputersystems.com. Thanks.